Welcome to the Smart Travel Family YouTube channel and the tour of the Ventanas de Guimar or Windows of Guimar Trail. How this and other of my trail videos work is I try to take a video about roughly every kilometer so that you see what the uh, trail looks like and also I try to stop at noteworthy locations if there is a particularly sketchy or interesting spot. I just finished the route and I'm putting this clip at the start of the video so that you would already at the start know the main pieces of information about the route. Uh, the whole circular route took me almost 15 kilometers, 14.92, and I did it in four hours, and that was quite a brisk ascent, and I did run the uh, five kilometers uh, downhill. Um, the tunnel system is actually only five kilometers long, so theoretically what you could do is you could go until the last tunnel, tunnel seven, and then turn back, then the whole route would be only 10 kilometers for you, and what you would also not have to do is the vertical ascent because pretty much all of the tunnel system is horizontal so you just have to ascend probably some hundred vertical meters at the very start of the trail but then in the tunnels it's basically a flat line however if you chose to do the circular route then the vertical ascent is pretty brutal i was quite surprised that the strava app gave me that it was 1220 meters and that sounds about right because basically as soon as the tunnel system finishes it's uphill from there on. So uh, choose wisely. I would say that if you are not much into hiking and vertical ascending, uh, then probably just go until uh, Tunnel uh, 7. Or actually you would already get the full experience if you go until Tunnel 4, which is around three kilometers in the trail. And then you can turn back. Uh, if you choose to do the whole route, be warned. Okay, we are at the start of the trail. These radio towers behind me, that's the location that you can also recognize when you are in Guimar but I will put the uh, precise GPS coordinates in the video as a layover and also in video description and the corresponding blog article Speaking of things to take along the absolutely main item that you have to get is a headlamp or a torch you of course could probably get by also with your mobile phone battery but everyone who has posted the review of the trail says that a, a headlight is an absolute necessity about a kilometer into the trail, you're arriving at the upper radio tower and it's also the first crossroad of the trail, so you can take that one behind me or the one here. And if I wouldn't have been using the Maps Me app, I was absolutely convinced that that's the right trail, but actually we go to the one that's to the right. And this is a general tip for me, if you are hiking a trail running in Tenerife, always use the uh, Maps Me or a similar app, because uh, otherwise it's really super easy to uh, get lost. If it wasn't already made clear in your readings on the internet, one last warning, taking the Ventanas de Guimar or Windows of Guimar trail is uh, absolutely at your own risk. Officially the trail is closed and the municipality wards of landslides. So just to be aware of uh, before you embark on this adventure. And at one kilometer and 200 meters you already can see the first sign that you are on the right route indeed. It's this bed for the water pipes. So looks like indeed I've taken the right direction. Yes, definitely one more confirmation. This is what the route looks like. I was hoping to do also a bit of trail running, but I think I'm out of luck at least for the first half of the trail. Because <laughs> it's not really wide and suitable for that. But you are totally compensated by an interesting trail. And once again, a super view. Briefly, what I know about the history of the trail and this uh, water pipes channel is that it was supposedly built around 1909, so more than 100 years ago, uh, to pass water to some more distant communities in the mountains. But for some reason it was never finished and is also not used in modern days because apparently the water is provided through other channels. So this is what the 1.7 kilometers of the trail look like. Quite a nice view, but also quite a nice drop. And probably this is the first slightly sketchy bit. I mean, like nothing really serious. I understand from pictures that there are more sketchy bits ahead. But I mean, yeah, if you, are, if you have someone who is scared of heights, then probably this trail is not for them. At 1.8 kilometers in the trail, you are 
reaching the first significant landmark, what the trail is known for. It is this excavator that has fallen down around 2015 from some construction works up on the hill. It's secured with some metallic ropes. And this is also the place where you have the first tunnel. Starts here, the tunnels are quite low. So you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. There are some people in there. I am 197 and I will be struggling. People warn me about this. This tunnel is actually less than 160 high. So I'm basically crouching like this. But the experience is <laughs> super nice. And it's also quite cool here. So a pleasant change after the quite hot trail. Uh, if you are switch off your uh, battery, headlight, then it's totally dark. I would not want to go here at least without a mobile phone uh, lamp. Recommendation for taller folk, don't walk into the pipe bed, walk beside it, because then you get at least 15-20 extra centimeters so you don't have to crouch as much. Some Spanish guys making a video ahead of me, trying not to spoil it with my headlamp. Out of the first tunnel, it's around 150 meters long. Viva España! Yeah. Okay. As we are almost at the second kilometer, basically the trail hasn't changed much. You get one more nice panorama view. And off we go. In total there should be seven tunnels, so six more to go. Very scenic. 300 meters from the first tunnel and this is the entrance to the second tunnel. The second tunnel is much shorter, half as long as the first one, but there are still no windows. So you just crouch and move ahead. By the way, in some places there is water, puddles, so then hopefully you can step on the side because outside the concrete bed it's the tunnels are dry. And here we are out of the second tunnel. And I believe that should be the third tunnel there. And you can finally see that you will get to get some uh, ventanas or windows. Remembered one piece of advice that I read on the internet. It was that you should consider taking a helmet with you. I would say that is an absolute overkill. Unless you are two meters 50 tall, uh, there is no problems in crouching a bit and you shouldn't hurt your head at all. Okay, we are finally at tunnel number three, a tunnel that has some ventanas or windows in it. You can see the first one ahead and there the tunnel actually goes to the left. So it's also interesting in that sense that it's not anymore straight as the first two. So the tunnel goes there. But we have to take a look at the first window. Let's put the phone over the ledge. Where does it go to? It's totally sheer drop. <laughs> I'm a little bit afraid of the heights, so I won't risk peeking over the edge. Just finished tunnel number three which was about probably 80 meters. It had a few windows in it, three or four. Uh, now the tunnel four is just ahead of me, right there. And I mean, this is really interesting trail. Uh, scenic, definitely, but it's <laughs> quite fun, I must admit, in crouching, crawling, no, not really cr crawling, but I mean like not your regular hike. So if someone is getting bored after the regular hikes that Tenerife has to offer, then uh, definitely this is something that will help you to mix things up and reignite the passion for hiking. And here we go, tunnel number four. Just above it, lots of cliffs. So this explains probably why they had to dig these tunnels or at least thought that I had to dig them because there's no way around the mountains. Uh, this is cool, let's see whether, whether it's possible to walk on the outside. Ah, uh, no, not really. There is still simply a possibility to, yes, take pictures on the cliff's edge 
and then back into the tunnel it goes. Speaking of the windows, just in case if you are wondering what they were made for, the wisdom of the internet says that they were created to, first of all, let in natural light, so that the tunnel makers wouldn't have to work in absolute darkness, but also to get rid of the construction rubble. As you see, there must have been quite a lot of stuff, debris, and no real possibility to transport it anywhere back. Freshly out of tunnel 4, the tunnel was about 60-70 meters long, and if for some reason you have to turn around, then I think that you have experienced the trail properly if you have gotten this far. It was definitely very nice to looking out of those larger windows. Ooh, <laughs> almost slipped. And yeah, but of course I'm curious what the remaining three tunnels have to offer. After tunnel four, you will also be just at the three kilometer mark and you will get one more really nice, beautiful panorama and a bit of a trail, not exactly on top of the ridge, but a very nice segment, so not any more uh, steep rock face, but something more picturesque and with shrubs. Speaking about people who should come on this trail, I would say definitely probably not miners. Uh, while there is nothing really extreme, but of course possibility of accidents is there, and it would be really hard to forgive oneself if something would happen to the people you are responsible for. Three and a half kilometers into the trail, you can see Guimar from a different angle. Also the Guimar mountain, no, the volcano that you can climb on. And here is the probably perfect spot when to take a breather, some nice place to sit at and enjoy a superb view. Mountains and deep ravines at their best. Just so you are aware, I was not joking about uh, not having scare of heights uh, as an necessity for those who are taking this trail, because yeah, after the coffee break place, basically this is what the trail looks like for quite a bit. <laughs> I hope you can see it on the video. <laughs> I don't even want to look down. <laughs> And at 3.6 kilometers, we are at tunnel number five. Let's see what this one has to offer. Okay, at the end of tunnel five, some people walking in the opposite direction. And just 15 meters from tunnel five, and there is already the entrance into tunnel six. Uh, tunnel five was the most open of all of them, really wide windows, and also this one open section around the middle. And in tunnel 6, it seems there are no windows anymore. In case you're wondering, I am still crouching. Basically, if you are taller than 1 meter 50, <laughs> then basically this is how it goes. Tunnel 6 is also quite a long one, almost 200 meters. <laughs> so your physical shape will be at least slightly tested. And here we are, out of tunnel 6 and also at the four kilometer mark. Trail continues. Uh, looking forward to seven and what I think is the last tunnel of the trail. And then also finally I should be able to do some trail running. Of course, if we will get off the cliff face. After tunnel six, you will walk some 70, 100 meters. And when you will arrive at these, what seem to be railway tracks, then you will arrive at the entrance of tunnel seven still in tunnel 7, actually longer than I thought. This was the light that I saw at the end of it, but it's not the end of the tunnel. Some leftover rails, probably from the time when the tunnel was made, which explains how the construction materials were brought here. It looks like tunnel 7 is the longest one so far. I'm at approximately 200 meters. There is this landslide or probably natural opening, and I would say that Tunnel 7 continues. Yep. Wow, okay. I don't know where Tunnel 7 ends, but these are still windows of Tunnel 7, which would mean that the tunnel is at least 400 meters long, maybe even longer. I want to get the most iconic photo shots from the Ventanas de Guimar trail. Then you have to reach uh, Trail 7 
because basically this is it what you see behind me. These are the most of the windows in a row that I've seen so far. And the trail itself is also quite scenic, windy, pleasure to walk in. Also, as I mentioned, at the longest section, the tunnel section of the whole trail, I'm now at roughly 300 meters and I see that I still have at least 100 to go, maybe more. Also very majestic scenery and really weird to imagine that there are at least 200 meters of rock above you when you walk in the tunnels. Oh my god, end of tunnel 7. This was a lot of crouching, my neck hurt. It was around 400 meters, the section with the windows, and then the last windowless section was about 300 meters. Nothing scary, nothing like that. Just walking like this the whole time. Oh, my neck and back are killing me now. But from here on, it should be just pure trail. And also, when you get out of tunnel number seven, you have reached kilometer five of the trail. So one more nice piece of scenery with this canyon here. But we must go on. If the trail is indeed 12, 13 kilometers, still have seven, eight to go. Okay, this is interesting. Still at kilometer five, just after tunnel seven. And there is this thing. So there is a fresh water pipe, modern one, and there is one more tunnel. I thought that we are supposed to be finished with tunnels. Uh, could go here or here. The wiki lock app tells me that I should go here. So let's see. In case I will have to turn around, I'll let you know. Okay, looks like I took the right tunnel. It was very short, maybe 30 meters. It goes next to this giant pipe here. So I guess the thicker one is probably water pipe and this is sanitation pipe. Ah. Now we are sort of in the middle of a small canyon. I must say I'm still 50-50 whether this is the right trail or I should have taken the tunnel because the trail in the mountains and in the tunnels was really well worn. However, this one is much less used. So at kilometer six, as I promised, I'll do also a clip every kilometer or so. Still going through this brushy undergrowth but I'm on the right track. I'm just wondering when it will be over. The going actually here is the slowest so far. Because sometimes the trail sort of disappears in some brushes. But as long as you follow this black water pipe, I think it's most likely sewage pipe. As for a high pressure pipe, it would be thinner. Uh, you're on the right track. And most likely this is the part of the trail where you will also have to do the most of climbing because I think we have to get up there in order to be able to get on the circular route back to your transportation at the radio towers. Looks like that this has been a stone quarry as there is this thingy on top and the trail doesn't go over the pile but here on the side. Nope, I would suggest that you don't try to climb this, even as I'm trying to get down. Basically, these rocks are triggering each other. <laughs> okay. But you probably don't want to get this pile come on top of you in a major rock slide. Let's be safe, then sorry. And actually, to reach the trolley, you don't have to walk up the slope here, because there is this decent path here. So you can just walk up here and probably just get there by the ridge. Yep, awesome. So we definitely do not try to walk up here. 
that will only lead to health hazards just walk around there come here and here you can also see where the trail led so it started so the last tunnel ended way behind there more than a kilometer and then you are walking on the bottom of the canyon so this is what the mine entrance looks like water coming out of the mountain I guess this is further past on in the pipe down the hill and good news there is this wider car track ahead so hopefully the going will be faster okay it's kilometer seven still ascending on the car track road from the Maya about four five hundred kilometers from it definitely much faster walk now but the uphill climb is quite steep and indeed I will have to get all the way up there walking already for a kilometer on the winding car road really tiresome I think I may be halfway there to the ridge so yeah definitely the hardest part of the climb but at least what you get is really beautiful scenery again Guimar in the distance and the ocean Kilometer 8 still struggling up the road but at least now the ridge is not far Woohoo! A little celebration 3 hours and 15 minutes in the trail and I've reached the highest point of it, I think. It's almost kilometer nine. And it seems that from here on it will be downhill and I will be able to do some trail running. Okay, I'm finally on the ridge, 9.3 kilometers. Also, I get to do some running until the start point should be some 3-4 kilometers. Absolutely lovely pine forest here. Kilometer 10 of the trail. You can see the summit behind me there. And we are now moving down to the radio stations. About 2-3 kilometers to go. The trail is quite nice. As I mentioned before, just watch out of those pine needles. And you should be good. Word of advice, check when there are the hunting periods for the muttons or however these animals are called. Um, you don't want to be on the mountain on the trails when the shooting is going on. These days it's going on in different sectors so I'm safe to run, but you should definitely check it out beforehand. I came all the way down there where, where you can see that electricity pole. Quite a windy route. The descent was about, I would say, five kilometers. Uh, but it was much more quick than, than the way up, up of, of course. This is, as you can see, the upper radio tower. So I have about eight, nine hundred meters still to go until the start of the route at the radio towers below. And we are done. Precisely after 14. 0.92 kilometers, almost 15, and after three hours and 58 minutes, uh, the trail is finished. If you also plan to take the Ventanas de Guimar uh, trail, I hope you will find this video useful. Check out also other videos on the channel. We have lots of trails in the Anaga Rural Park and elsewhere on the island. And uh, thanks for supporting the channel by pressing those like and subscribe buttons. See you next time.